Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Amen. A warm welcome to Zion as we gather. Just a few announcements as we begin. Know that after the service, you can come downstairs, have some coffee, and enjoy a fellowship time this morning as we have uh, conversations around these wonderful new tables and chairs. So, yay, yay. Thank you, Bill and Hazel, as we remember uh, Bill and Hazel drilling and uh, the generosity of Sue's family for, for those. So you, we're grateful. Gather around downstairs today as we have time to talk about Atlanta and its impact on the civil rights history, and you're welcome to join us uh, this morning. Uh, this morning, we want to just say again a big thank you to Mary Weedle, who was our faith community nurse, and we had a nice time last Sunday gathering around with her family. Hey, you wonderful people at, uh-oh, where would the picture go? Uh-oh, I lost it. It was uh, the uh, wonderful Bunko group that joined us last week. Hey, Bunko! You're meeting again in July. When is that date? Yep, it's in July. You'll see that. You're welcome to join us. It's not right. It's in July, right? Yep, super. Um, what is happening in May is the first Saturday is May 4th. It is Cars and Coffee, and the Zion Lutheran Church uh, Civil Rights Group is planning on doing a cookout at Cars and Coffee, so come on out and support that event. And then also on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo event is taking place at Katie's Cup in partnership with LULAC, so we're grateful to have that chance to have some music on that date as well, and some dancing and some food, so please join us for that. The Midtown Lutheran Parish is having the Midtown Fun and Health Fair coming up in June at Patriots again, so you're welcome to join us for that over at Patriots from 11 to 2 p.m. The Rockford Midtown Market begins again this summer, and we're up to 17 vendors, Malika said. So you're welcome to join us for the Midtown Market again this summer, first Saturdays of the month, over at the RPS 205 parking lot. We gather this morning for worship, we gather at the font and begin our service with the thanksgiving for baptism as we come before the Lord, being reminded again that we are the sheep of his pasture and all we like sheep have gone astray. So we come back and remember God's grace and mercy for us as we gather at the font. I invite you to stand and turn to your bulletin as we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Look, here is water. Immersed in the promise of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered her boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is water of life. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Look, here is water. Allah. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. 
much we need your tender care in your pleasant pastures feed us for our use your fold prepare blessed Jesus blessed Jesus you have bought us we are yours blessed Of God, us we are yours. We are yours in love. We found us. Be the guardian of our way. Keep your flock from sin. Defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear us children when we pray. You have promised to receive. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather today and remember that Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd, and we are the lost sheep. This new life comes to us even when we don't open the door. Jesus guards and protects the sheep. Christ is risen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. So the first reading is from the fourth chapter of the book of Acts, written only years after Jesus died and was resurrected. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. This is salvation. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you please join with me in reading uh, the 23rd Psalm, probably written about 2,600 years ago. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I shall fear no for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from 1 John 3.16. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has this world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and truth and action and and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Holy words 
that's long preserved for a walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me. have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart, words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope in this world. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you, my fellow sheep. Everybody say, bah. bah. Amen. No humbug, just bah. We gather on this Sunday, and we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday, that we are the sheep, and the Lord is our, our shepherd. And the Lord is a good shepherd, and today we gather, we thank God that that shepherd continues to call out to us. This morning, the Spirit called out to you, when that alarm clock went off in the middle of a dream about my sister, the Spirit said, wake up. It's a new day. It was an amazing dream about this new place. We were all gathered for worship. And there was a specific pew that my sister sat in. It was the most beautiful image that the Lord has called her home. We gather in this wonderful place, wherever we gather, to have a part and be a part of community. And I think of these wonderful images that we have about Good Shepherd Sunday all around us that we hardly ever take time to look at. If you look to the right of the organ, you'll see the sheep window right over there to your right. It is beautiful. Uh, There's no humbug there, but it's a beautiful image. These are the two images on your screen this morning. The one on the left is that image. There's a beautiful image of those sheep. And then the one on the right is the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd window. And does anybody know where that window is? It is, if you look right to your left, you'll see it through the wall. You have to imagine there's a staircase right on the other side of that area. Between the atrium and the elevator, there's a staircase going down outside, and then it goes down right by the uh, WOW office and the uh, nursery. And down that staircase, there are three beautiful windows. The one in the middle 
is the good shepherd window. And nobody ever uses that staircase, but this is the beautiful image that is our background today of the shepherd. I have no idea when it was installed, but it's probably a part of the 1922-23 edition when they built that and then probably put it in a little after that. It's a beautiful image on this Sunday as we think about Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday has been a part of uh, the Lutheran Church's support, especially for Lutheran social services, specifically the one in Illinois. So we are grateful and encourage you to consider making donations. There is a flyer uh, that was handed out, hopefully, with your bulletins. If not, they are in the back. That support and encourage you to see how um, Lutheran social services of Illinois are a part of the ministry and the extension of the Lutheran Church throughout the state and throughout the country, for there are Lutheran social service agencies uh, throughout the country. When I lived in Philadelphia, the Lutheran Social Services were a part of the orphanage ministry post-Civil War, as all of these children had no fathers and needed care and um, support for that era. And Lutheran Social Services continued to provide those kind of care and that kind of ministry. Pastor Bittner was uh, trying to arrange to be here. He's the retired executive director from Lutheran Social Services, so we gather and thank God for... Uh, a shepherd who led and served for Lutheran Social Services for many years and encourage you to consider continued support of LSSI. I can't help but think of the pastors around us who are shepherds, uh, including Pastor Bittner, Pastor Peterson. Uh, grateful for them. Today I'm wearing the stole for Pastor Marvin Johnson, um, whose um, uh, wife gave these to the church um, after he had passed away before I came here. And we're grateful to remember the role of the pastor who serves as shepherd. Of course, I never thought of myself as a shepherd. I just remember my professor, David Rhodes, in seminary when I said, I I really don't think of myself as a shepherd. And David Rhodes said, just be a smart sheep then. He goes, most sheep are dumb. It takes a shepherd, a smart sheep, to be able to point to somebody and say, do you know that this person loves you? This person loves you. These two women in the church love you. And that's a part of the call of smart sheep, is to remind people that, for the most part, sheep are dumb, and all we like sheep have gone astray. And the Spirit calls us back into community. The Spirit continues to guide us in community. For the Lord is our shepherd. And Jesus today said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life. This reference of the shepherd, of course, is one where we see um, in this image of Jesus referencing him in, in the same passage in John 10 about being the gate also. And the shepherd that would lead their sheep out and the sheep would hear the voice of the shepherd and follow in and out and back into the pen and the sheep would go inside these rock walls. They, of course, didn't have doors and gates like we think of. The shepherd was the gate. You notice how clean-shaven the shepherd usually was? Ah, notice. I think of Eldora Engloff. She'd come up to me on a day like today, and she goes, now that's the way a pastor should look. (laughs) Aww. But, of course, out for days and days, a sheep... Uh, would gather in these pens, and the shepherd literally would stand, lay, place themselves in front of the sheep to make sure nobody would come in and out. The sheep, the shepherd, the gate. I can't help but think of this image as we think about 28 years ago when Zion Lutheran Church in the beautiful neighborhood continued to be a place where we created and partnered with kids around the world and the park district And we created Gateway Park, which is on the left, the wonderful playground just outside the church. This is Gateway Park that the Park District manages, but the church and patriots technically own those properties. And when the community center was built, it was initially called Zion Gateway Community Center. And I asked Pastor Bittner this week, um, where did the gateway come from? Because it is this image of providing opportunities for kids to come in and out. And he said he thought it was Bill Moore who came up with that image that term, the gateway. Because indeed, that's what they're doing. They're coming in and out, and they're given an opportunity, a gateway of opportunities 
to be encouraged, to hear words of support, guidelines, and rules. And, of course, with Miss Janice there, they listen very well. That's right. And we can't think about, we can't help but think about that place and the partnership that Zion has still with Patriots Gateway Community Center and the wonderful Easter egg hunt uh, that we have every year and the other community outreach events that we partner with Patriots Gateway Center. For indeed, those kids like us continue to hear a word of love and encouragement. For they, like us, have gone astray. And they need to hear that voice again of love and encouragement in the midst of our world. They need to know that they are sheep who, even though they have gone astray, they have been called into community in a way that reminds us of God's grace and mercy. We are called today again. We listen to that voice. That voice of the shepherd who calls us, not only into community, but then out into the world Because then we are called to let other sheep know that God's grace and mercy covers a multitude of sin and that we indeed are part of that community. As I think about the legacy of sheep and shepherds around here, I can't help but think of Dick Brittenson's words when he referenced this quote from Pastor Conrad. Pastor Conrad once said, The Lord is my shepherd, and that's all that I want. The sheep continue to need to hear God's voice. And this is all that we want. This is all that we need. To be reassured that God's grace and mercy is indeed the voice calling us into community. Gathering us around the table to hear the word. To encourage one another in the fellowship. And then to be called into the world. To love and care for all other of God's sheep. The Lord, say this with me, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all that I want. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you continue to shepherd us and lead us. You continue to remind us that our cups are running over, and that surely your goodness and your mercy chases after us all the days of our lives. For you are the good sheep. Good shepherd, you are the very, very good shepherd. And your sheep, wherever they gather, are called by you as children of the heavenly Holy One. And we praise you. Amen. Heal my weary soul.
kindness and mercy follow me. you to stand as you are comfortable and able as we recite the words of the Apostles Creed with one another I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of all grace, you are the source of life and joy. Strengthen the resolve of your church throughout this world, that together we may press on toward the goal of your heavenly call in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all creation, you plant and nourish the earth as your own precious vineyard. Bless the fields and orchards and the hands of those who labor in them, that your people are fed with an abundant harvest of good fruit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all the earth, you desire peace and justice between nations and peoples. Guide leaders of nations, states, provinces, and cities that they faithfully govern your people with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all compassion, in Christ you lovingly poured out yourself like wine for your people. Have mercy on all who mourn, all who struggle with mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and in any need may healing. We pray especially for those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our God. Compassionate God, bless Lutheran Social Services of Illinois for all the ministry work that they do every day. Empower all churches in our state to support their work in a generous way so that they can continue their mission of helping others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all hope, the saints who came before us lived and died with their hearts fixed on you. We give you thanks for their faithful witness, and we wait with hope for the day when we join their voices in praise. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that we will remain in you and that you will remain in us. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing. We ask that you look upon us with favor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
please share a sign of peace with those around you that is comfortable. At this time, I would like to remind you that our offering box is located in the back of the sanctuary. When the waves of desperation are crashing all around, when the pain of isolation has knocked you to the ground when you're lost and alone and you're crying out in pain be still and wait hear the voice of Jesus say you are not alone Though your valleys may be deep, I am here. Though your mountains may be steep, I am here. I am your shepherd, your rock. I long to hold your hand, to whisper in your ear. You are not alone. I know that you are near Through the seasons of this lifetime Your calming voice I hear There are times I am weak And forget to call your name And then I am still And hear the voice of Jesus say you are not alone I am here with you Though your valleys may be deep I am here Though your mountains may be steep I am here I am your shepherd your Spring your ear, you are not alone. I am here. I am of death I am here you are not alone I am here with you though your valleys may be deep I am here may be steep I am here I am your shepherd your rock I long to hold your hand to whisper in your ear you are not alone I am here Jesus 
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth, earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. All are welcome for communion. Come, as instructed by the usher, receive the bread, the wafer, and then take a red is wine, and then the inside circle, white is juice. All are welcome.
my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I thirst no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I thirst no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I thirst no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of hope, bless you now and always. Thank you. 
he's done when by thy grace the victory's won even death's cold wave I will not flee since God through Jordan leadeth me he leadeth me he Go in peace, God is at work in you.